everyone. So to make my little uh, jar lid pin cushions, I obviously need some lids. I've got these two to show you what you can use. They're obviously different sizes. You pick whatever size you want. This is just one whole lid if you don't have like a metal one. You can use a plastic one maybe from a mayonnaise jar or something like that or you know something that has a nice uh, little uh, lip here, nice little thick lip. So anyway, you just want to clean it up really well and uh, dry it up. Also, I have this one. This is from like, you know, your preserve type of mason jars, which you can use. They're separate pieces. But what we can do is add a little bit of glue inside here and then put this down and make it into one piece so that this doesn't get pushed in. We're also going to need a scrap a piece of fabric. Uh, I'm going to be using the smaller lid, so I feel like this is enough fabric. Let me tell you what size this is. This is about 10 by 10. So that's a good size piece of scrap to use. If you want to iron it, go ahead. I'm not even going to bother with that. I'm going to need some filling here. I'm, I'm using this fiber fill. Uh, you can use cotton balls. The only thing I'm going to tell you about cotton balls, if you have your tight cotton balls like that, just break them up a little bit to make them nice and soft so that pins will be able to get pushed in through them. Otherwise, it'll be really hard. Okay, so besides that, we need some uh, a needle, a hand needle and some thread. So I've got a needle already put put there on there and I'm going to be using my hot glue gun and some glue sticks and of course I have a pair of scissors so I can cut a little circle on my fabric and I have some pins here that I'm going to use for my cushion this is what I want this new cushion for are my little quilting pins okay all right so let's get started all right the first thing I did was I took my hand needle here and I've threaded it so I put some thread in it long enough to go all the way around my little circle of fabric. Uh, you probably need about, at least get 10 inches of, uh, or well, 20 because you're gonna double the thread. You wanna double, okay? And then knot it at the, at the ends. Okay, so here's our little fabric. I'm gonna fold it in half, and then I'm gonna fold it in half again. And I'm just gonna follow, and try to do kind of a curved cut here. Try to just use as much of the fabric as I can here. And I am going to trim off this and what I'll do is I'll bring this little end up here just get a little nice little cone there and then continue cutting and just cut that off okay so as you saw we folded it it was a square you fold it in half fold it in half again and you can start cutting and then you can fold that over so that you get like a kind of an even cut and you kind of get you kind of get a circle and that doesn't really matter if it's not a perfect circle okay because it's all going to get gathered so the next thing we want to do is we want to take our needle and thread here let me get the camera closer so you can see that okay so like I said I have my needle here it's all threaded I have a nice piece of thread it is double so I put it through the eye and I grabbed the end and I pulled it all the way to meet up with the other end and then I made a little knot so it is a double on there okay so you just want to make sure you got double thread okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to sew all the way around our circle so we come to this other end where we started okay you're going to want to go in about a quarter inch to a half an inch in you're going to look at your little your little um lid here and you want this to be just a little bit bigger so you can make it nice and poofy so this little lid is almost three inches so this is about three times so it's about nine inch diameter in case you need to uh, follow that all right so all we're going to do is just going to hand stitch it just go in and out up and down they don't even have to be like really tight can you see what I did Pull your thread all the way. You're going to be gathering it as you go. Don't worry if it doesn't gather right away. But you can see how far away the stitches are right here. Right there. So that's all I'm doing. Let me get this in the camera here. So just get it in there. Up, down, like that. And don't get too close to the edge. Okay, so I'm gonna continue doing this. Let me put the thread this way because we don't want it to get caught. Okay, here's the end of my needle and I'm pulling it through. See, 
At the very end, when I get to it, I'm going to gather it. But first, right now, I just want to get my thread all the way around. And because the thread might not be long to go all the way around, I can pull on it a little bit until I got it a little bit of a gathering. And then I can pull it tight once I decide to put the, uh, the filling into it. But I'm going to go ahead and continue, like I said, all the way around, doing that same little stitch. And what I'm using is I'm doing the length of the needle. And then I pull it, get to the next little area, do the same thing. It's not easy looking at the camera and then trying to do this without actually looking at your hands. So anyway, there we go. Okay, it's looking like a little shower cap right now. So I wanna finish all the way around this, excuse me, I wanna finish all this till I get back over here but do not overlap that just finish up right here this is where i started i'm gonna finish up right about there okay just leave a little a little space right here okay i'll be back when this is all sewn all the way around okay here you can see that i've gotten the thread all the way around and uh here's the other the ending point so i'm just i just came up right near it not right next to it but near it and here's where you can now pull on this and see how it all gathers up like that that's what we want to do but first we want to fill it with some batting so i'm just going to open it up slightly here that's why i wanted a nice long piece of thread i think i said 10 inches or 20 inches but maybe a little bit more than that okay all right so here i've got my batting so i'm just going to take bits of this and start pushing them in I'm going to get my lid also right here next to me, right there, and I'm going to start pushing this in. And what you do is, ever so often, you can gather to see how full it is and how it compares to your lid. I feel like it's, it could use a little bit more. I want it really poofy, you guys. So I'm going to put some more, and I don't want it to be too loose. This could actually go like in a bigger, on a bigger size lid than what I chose to do, but it's going to be nice and poofy. Okay, so let's look at that now. And let's pull on it. Make sure all that's in there. Look at that. Careful not to pull it too hard where you tear the string. Okay, just be very careful doing that. And look at that. Now, let's say you had cut this and it doesn't close completely like that, you know, for the size that you want for your lid. Okay, let's say this was a lot came out to be a lot smaller and it oh it's just too small for the space here you don't have to close it all the way it can just close up to you know like that or it can be a little bit more open all you want to make sure is that this opening here all this will fit with the inside of your lid okay so if it's open this much that's okay that's not going to get hit in here it's going to get hot glue down but this one i'm going to go ahead and make it as tight as i can because look, look how big my poof is compared to my lid. But I really like that, you guys. It looks like a little hot water bottle, <laughs> like a little kid's hot water bottle. But that's what it looks like, okay? And that's fine, but I, I might just go ahead and add in a little bit more fiber fill because I want it to feel really tight in there. So I'm just gonna stuff it a little bit more. Look how little I had. I had a whole big bunch. I had like triple this much. Okay triple about you know this much that I've already well I've put about you know what two-thirds in there and I'm almost putting the whole bit okay I'm gonna pull it tight again so I can look at it hold on to the the thread where you gather it and you put this on there and then compare it and it looks it still looks really good you guys I don't know I think I can stuff this rest of this in there let's let's try that Let's push it all in there and of course you want to look at it and make sure that you know it's not getting all like too lumped up to one side that it doesn't look you know misshapen <laughs> okay let's tighten it again and don't worry if when you decide to knot it that it kind of opens up a little bit because you can always get your your, your thread here on the needle on the same needle that's why you want a nice lump and then just sew it up a little bit more so it all gets caught together Okay, I think that's good, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and sew this. 
See, I'm, what, I, what, I, what I did is I, I, I'm coming up right here with my thread. That's where it comes up through, right here. But I'm gonna grab this, this bit over here, like the whole, the whole gathered area here, put my needle through it to kind of, you know, pull it together. And then, here's where I'm at. I'm gonna go across and grab some of this so I can sew that together. This is how you just do it, okay? You just, wherever, just start, you know, getting it to, to be a closed up area or at least a, a tight enough area, even if you leave it open. Just start grabbing it through, pulling it. And at some point decide, okay, I'm gonna make a knot so this doesn't move on me anymore. Okay, so I'm gonna make a knot right here and that's not gonna move on me anymore. I can let it go and it won't pop open on me because I've already made a knot. So once you have it like that, and let's say this little opening here is bigger, just, you know, wherever you need it and that it fits perfectly, it's fine as long as all the ends fit inside of here, like I said. Okay, so I'm just gonna sew it up a little bit more, make it a little bit tighter, make my little hole a little bit tighter on this, on this little poof here. Just gonna grab it from wherever and just sew it shut together. And I'm kind of going around, you know, I'm, I'm moving around like that, grabbing here, going across, grabbing here, going across, and so forth. So I'm making sure that I'm grabbing all these ends. So, you know, we don't have any, like, anything trying to sneak up op open on us. Okay, and just keep doing it till, you know, you, you feel confident enough that you've grabbed enough fabric, or maybe you're running out of thread. But if you have to make a knot and add more thread because you want to sew it up a little bit more, go right ahead. Okay, I'm going to make a little knot right here. Actually, I'm going to double knot it. There we go. Okay, so now I can cut this thread off. All right. All right, let's uh, just shape it up a little bit. I'm just going to push it, you know, try to get a nice little shape on it. Squeeze it wherever you have to. Just shape it up however you can. See, as you can see, look, see how I have like little loosey bits right here? That's why I wanted all that fiber fill because I'm gonna try. Now, this is not the best shape. You can work on it a little bit better, add more fiber fill to get a nicer, rounder bit than what I've got, but I think you get the idea here. You know, what I can just do is just try to make a, a little bunched up area over here too, to give it another corner because it seems to want to do like almost like a little square. Okay, you guys, I'm, I'm happy with it. So let's go to the next step where we're going to get some hot glue. Okay, so I'm looking at my little poofy here. <laughs> some parts of it are, don't look so great, but that's okay. You could always grab your, your thread and pull on some areas that, don't, that look a little too loose. Like this little area here looks a little loose to me. So I think I'm going to sew that a little bit more. So if it gives it a, a nicer, rounder area because look how it See that little bump here? If I pull the fabric, it'll round it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna put some more thread on my needle and grab this bit and pull it over to the center, sew it up a little bit more, and then check and see if there's any other little areas where maybe it needs to be pulled. So I'll be back as soon as that is done. And action. All right, so I've gone ahead and I pulled more of the uh, fabric just to make it a little bit tighter and give it a more rounded look. So as you can see, that, that could be fixed. I mean, I could have done it a little bit more right here, but I'm happy, I'm satisfied with it. And in order for all this thread not to come undone on me, uh, you know, just kind of pop open, which it'll be okay once it's glued in there, but in the meantime, say you didn't have time to glue this, something came up, and you've got to leave this off to the side, and maybe the kids grab it and bounce it around, and then it all pops open on you. Let's put some glue on there to get that all, you know, basically like sealed a little bit. Let's put some glue all over that little opening, okay? All right, and you can put it on the knot of your thread if, it's, if the opening is bigger. Okay, so now we want to put it on the lid. So I'm going to put lots of glue inside of here, and I'm actually going to do it like this rather than doing it like this because I want to see where I'm actually placing my lid. So I'm going to try and center it on here. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is for my own private use. You know, hopefully you're doing the same thing for your own private use and, you know, maybe some some family who would appreciate your artistry. Okay, so I'm trying to get hot glue all along the edges here because I wanna make sure that it captures fabric. And because this is metal, it gets hot. 
So try to do this <laughs> as best or as safely as you can or grab it with some a little a little mitt or something. Okay, I think I got enough glue in there for now. Okay, so I'm gonna try and center this as best as I can. So I'm looking at it from my point of view. And now what you're going to do is you're gonna push it now. Like I said, it was it's hot. So I'm gonna get a little piece of fabric here that I have. Make a little a little protection here for my thumbs. And then just push this in. Push it in at the edges because you want that fabric that was in the edges to grab onto that glue. And then just kind of hold it there, let it cool off a little bit. Okay, now if you have those little vice things that you use like when you put like two pieces of wood or something together, you know, if you happen to have those things that you can grab things and hold them together, put one of those on here. Especially if you're not using hot glue and you choose to use like a super glue or E6000 or something. Uh, use that on there to hold it like that till it's dry. Okay, so I've done one of these already before in the past, and I don't even remember what year it was. I may have done a video of it. I think I may have. But anyway, here I've done it again. The one that I've had for years is still in very good condition. But this is what it looks like now that I'm done. Okay, don't try to pull it off yet. This is still warm. So obviously the glue is not dry. So don't try to like, oh, let me see if it's... If it's sturdy now, don't let this cool off completely. That's when you know it's completely dry. Okay, so for the sake of the video, I'm gonna say that this is completely dry. <laughs> and now I'm just adding my pins into my pin cushion. Look how cute that looks. I think it looks absolutely cute. So you can use any fabric, even if you have like an old bandana, that would look really, really cute. Uh, what I have here, let me show you. This is my old pin cushion right here. I did this some years ago and I think I may even have a video on it, but let me take some of these pins off so I can show you what this fabric actually is. All right, everyone, I've removed all the pins. Look at all the pins that fit into this little pin cushion. Look, I have chubby little hands. Okay, my hands aren't very big. But that gives you an idea how big this is. Oh, look, look, here, I'll do this. This is about almost three inches. It's about two and three quarter inches, you know, wide. This was one of these, um, these type of lids that, you know, this little part comes off. And I can see here where I hot glued that in there. So that little bit is in there. But look at the fabric, you guys. Can you tell here? This is quilted. They're little pieces of fabric that I had left over when I was doing some quilting little scraps and I decided to make little quilt squares like the little pinwheel design and then I put something here in between this one and this one and then I added a fabric here and that's when I had gotten my my quilting sewing machine so it's got these little stitching it's really cute as you can see you could do something like that and make a really cute little pin cushion and all those pins that were right on here those were all in that cushion and I still had room to put more so obviously this one here, which is a little bit poofier and just a tiny bit bigger on the bottom here, as you can see, I'm probably going to be able to put a lot more pins, but these are my, my cute little quilting pins. Um, I have to be real careful with these. And if you have animals, a cat or dog, be real careful because they like to grab these and chew on these and they could accidentally take the whole pin into their mouth. So be very careful because they're so lightweight and it's just so tempting for your cat to just knock it off whatever you have it on a table or, or shelf or whatever you have it on and um, then your dog or yeah the cat will get to it and just be very careful with any of your little pin cushions with your little pets okay that was just my little public announcement there <laughs> i hope y'all are keeping safe during this time um i'm trying to find projects to do with you know little fabric pieces that i have like this so uh I decided to make a little pin cushion. I do want to make a tote bag. Uh, let me know if you want to see that. I, I don't know if I just want to make a plain tote bag or do like, you know, a little quilted pattern on it. So you all tell me what you, what you would like to see. Someone suggested I do, uh, I forgot what the bow is called. I think it's called a funky bow and it is using starch. I don't have any starch, you guys. I can't get out to the stores right now. I'm keeping myself very quarantined right now. Uh, so I don't want to go out because I'm very prone to getting sick. So um, I'm not going anywhere seeing anybody. So I can't go out and get starch. But as soon as I can, or if I can get someone to somehow get it for me, and if I can figure out how to make those starched bows, or the starch fabric to make the bows, 
I will do that. Or maybe even some of that spray starch that you iron with. I don't know. We'll find out. But thank you very much for the suggestion. Uh, uh, I had that. That was sent to me by Messenger. Or maybe it was an email. I don't even remember you guys. But anyway, I think it was a Messenger on my, on my Trisha's Creations uh, on Facebook. So you guys, I do have that page. You guys go there. Please like my page. Follow it. And you can uh, message me there. You can leave comments on the page. You can leave pictures of your projects if you want to share with everybody, which would be awesome. Or if you want to share a recipe with everybody, you're absolutely welcome to do so. I've left it open so people can go ahead and post that. Um, please just be very nice and very kind. Don't put anything, you know, that's uh, distasteful or, you know, mean or nasty. Uh, it, it will get removed. Okay, so just letting everybody know. Uh, that I do have that page, so also I have my uh, Instagram. Everything's down at the bottom. Look at the description box below. So anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my little tutorial, trying to figure out things to do with little fabric pieces that I do happen to have, supplies that I have here at home, uh, you know, that I can do crafts for. I want to be able to do things for you. I may have already done this in a video, so maybe, maybe look for that. I feel like I did, or maybe I, it was just for my Facebook. I don't even remember you guys. Anyway, I'm going to give myself a big old thumbs up, and I hope that you two will give me a big old thumbs up. You're not seeing me, you guys, because I'm still in my pajamas. Yes, I am. And I didn't feel like getting dressed. <laughs> so leave a nice comment down below. Thank you to everyone who has been subscribing. If you haven't already done so, please hit that red subscription button. And then hit the notification bell so that you get notified of when I put up my videos. My videos used to be every Tuesday and every Friday, but I seem to post on Mondays and Thursdays. So I'm just going to say I post twice a week. And ever so often, if I have time or if I have the uh, nerve to get dressed, I will do a weekend vlog or just a vlog during the week. Just something fun and uh, for you guys. I'm looking forward to doing a live uh, uh, pretty soon. So, you know, I'm getting desperate here being at home all alone. <laughs> so I want to talk to some people. So let me know when you guys, you know, suggest a good time. Uh, as, and I'm, I'm thinking that most of you might be at home as well. Okay, everyone, please share on your social medias. And as always, enjoy.